All right, so for general purpose cleaning, most of the time, uh, you know, put your solvent in here, brush it around, get it blown out. Um, sometimes I'll take apart the needle, the housing here. One of the other tools I wanted to show you really quickly, since we're doing this, is I'll just break this down again. See, there we go. It's just a little bit tighter, and plus I have some lube on my fingers, so I can't grab that as much. Um, when I start taking these parts off, sometimes I'll just go ahead and take my needle out. Now, a couple of other things. If you have a lot of paint buildup on here, you don't want to be pulling your needle back through the needle bearing because that's going to draw all your paint and contaminants onto your needle bearing. So the preferred method is to take your contaminated needle out the front. So, and this, of course, we, we've done that, uh, but I'll just show you that real quick, what that actually looks like. So we'll take everything off again, being careful not to bump or damage anything. And now that we have still have our needle in the airbrush, we want to be really careful not to bend or tweak anything too much. So our nozzle is going to come out, and then we can see our airbrush completely, ex or our needle completely exposed, and we're just going to loosen our tightening chuck and just push it through and take it through the front. So that way you're not drawing paints back again across your needle bearing. So that way you can um, get everything cleaned out, clean off the contaminants off your needle. And that's pretty much the disassembly um, that I will go to for just general purpose end of session paint cleaning. Um, again, sometimes depending on, especially if I'm doing primer, I'll probably take the, the nozzles off and get those things cleaned up. If I've got some buildup, sometimes you'll get buildup inside the nozzle housing and the nozzle itself. Um, if you'll look through there, sometimes you'll see you won't be able to see sunlight through the end of it. That means you have paint buildup, contaminants, whatever, inside of your nozzle housing. So, once again, my WADA has this handy dandy nozzle reamer. So this is just like a needle, but it's cut in half so that it gives me an edge to slide into my nozzle housing, into my lot nozzle itself. We can see the coming out of the end of the nozzle, and then we just kind of turn it and scrape some of that paint out. Of course, I don't have any in there because I've already cleaned it, but that's how you would clean out paint at the end of your nozzle. But again, you don't want to jam this in here and just start scraping and really gouging that through there because you will blow out the end of your nozzle, which is what you don't want. So again, very lightly until it stops, just give it a little bit of a turn, come out, clean it off, go back in if you need to. You can dip it in some cleaning solution if you want, um, just to kind of help getting things loose, loosened up. So that's what that's for. Again, a very, very handy tool. And then again, we go back to our brushes. A lot of times you'll get that reamer is not gonna, that's really good for the nozzle, but for the housing, we can go back to our little brushes here, brush set, dip that in our cleaning solution of choice, and then just kind of gently get that in there, twist it around and get all of our paint. You can see a little tiny bit left in there. That may have been on the brush itself. I'm gonna blame it on that. So that's how we would do that. And again, um, you don't necessarily have to break it down this far, but as far as just general purpose cleaning, that's as far as the as far as you need to go with disassembly. Now, a lot of times when I have when you have this out, like I said, I think kind of the, one of the problems on my valve ring went out uh, is because as I have all this disassembled, of course, now we have a hole through the middle of our needle bearing, and as I'm getting solution in here and using my brushes and kind of cleaning things out, some of that solution will leak back into here into the piston valve area, which will cause a vacuum, not allowing my, uh, my trigger to release very smoothly. So again, now that we have our needle out and the trigger, if you want, I'll tighten this down and use that as a, as a pressure. And you can pull, you can see, you can just kind of pull your spring back here and just pull that uh, trigger right out. You can look down there, sometimes you'll see moisture down in there I'll use a dry paint paintbrush or something to kind of get down there and soak up some of that solution and get that out of there. Uh, but you don't really want solution, especially paint, but solution down into there. But sometimes it happens when you're cleaning, um, just dry it out and then we should be good to go. And that has happened to me a lot, but again, 
that's how I take care of that. And then we can see our trigger body itself has a groove on the back of it, and that's how we know uh, which is front, which is back. Sometimes I'll actually add a little tiny bit of, um, again, my trusty 3-in-1 oil onto this uh, trigger plunger. Um, again, because it's just, uh, just a little tiny bit of a coating on there just to help that keep that seal nice and lubricated. And then uh, drop that trigger back down in there, test our housing, release the, the spring tension on there. We should be good to go again. All right, so this really is as far as you need to go as, um, as paint, much as paint cleaning. And if I'm just doing it's just regular paint, I'm not using primer. Primer tends to get everywhere and, of course, dry, get kind of hard, which is what it's designed to do, which is why sometimes when, I've, when I'm done priming, I'll break it down this far. But if I'm just um, spraying regular paint, a lot of times I'll just get my clean out my cup, spray some solution through there. Sometimes I'll pull the needle out if I get it making sure I get my needle as clean as possible. And I will pull it out the back. I know I'm not supposed to. I just said pull it out the front. But if, it got a, if I've got it pretty well cleaned off, um, and I'll pull it back a little bit and get my paintbrush down in there and kind of get some of the rest of the contaminants off the front, the face of the needle, go ahead and pull it out the back, um, clean the paint off my, you know, get some solution on my cloth and run that needle across back and forth over there see if, and feel it, see if there's any contaminants on there, see if my tip is nice and straight. A lot of times if you drag it across your finger as you're twisting it, you'll feel it grab, kind of start scratching at you. That way you know you've got a bent needle. And there's a couple of different things that you can do to, to kind of correct that. Now, I want to go ahead and disassemble the front of the airbrush before I put my needle back in because I don't want to risk having my needle exposed and then putting parts over there and, and damaging that again. So. We'll just go ahead and reassemble our nozzle housings, uh, housing and get that back together again and then put our needle in where it's safe and uh, everything's installed already and protected. Just a little tight on that is all we want. Finger tight, cap, loosen our chuck here and then use your finger as a guide so that you don't jam your needle into the back of a metal part and bend it. Again, just test our tension on there and that feels pretty good. Just enough to kind of grab and let that, but still let that needle slide back and forth. Tighten it down and that's it. My air compressor is out in the garage, so, uh, but that feels pretty good. I'll get it hooked up to some air and blow some air through it and see. But uh, as far as my experience is telling me that everything is feeling and moving like it should. So hopefully that worked. One more quick thing I wanted to talk about, P.S., is to me, uh, so there's a couple of different things here. So we have our lacquer thinner. This is what I use to kind of clean my brushes, actually thin the paint. There's the Tamiya lacquer, um, Tamiya acrylic thinner as well. The difference between the thinner and the cleaner is this is for thinning paint, this is for cleaning. Uh, one of the things I really like about this airbrush cleaner, it has some lubricating factors built into it so um, sometimes I'll run my lacquer thinner through it, kind of get everything cleaned out initially. And then as my final cleaning and my final rub down, I'll use the airbrush cleaner. And it just leaves a really nice film across everything. Uh, it's not a, not a contaminant because I haven't had any issues with, you know, using other paints right after I've used the airbrush cleaner. But this just adds a little bit of a lubricant on some of those O-rings that we, we went through and saw in there and just kind of keeping things nice and smooth and, uh, and running well. So I'm really happy with the, the Tamiya um, Airbrush Cleaner. Uh, this is a really great product. Again, I'll kind of strip everything down with the thinner and then I'll kind of cl finish cleaning up with the cleaner and uh, it just adds a really nice finish on there. All right, thanks guys.